Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Ask Dr. Nick. My name is Dr. Nick Schmidlkoffer and I work for the Neurologic Wellness Institute here in downtown Chicago. And today's question is, how can traumatic brain injury increase the risk of autoimmune disease? And this is a question I get a lot because I have a lot of patients, um, or we get a lot of patients that have complex um, etiologies and they, they get autoimmune disease and they don't really know where it came from. And a lot of times they had concussions previously and, or, or traumatic brain injuries previously. And with, if we start just with autoimmunity, we know autoimmunity can be a variety of factors, variety of causes. And a lot of times it deals with either like infections or um, food sensitivities. Um, and then there's always a genetic component as well. And then generally it's, it's a pretty high consensus that leaky gut or intestinal permeability is a huge factor in, in the onset of autoimmunity. So you generally need three things. You need the genetics for a specific autoimmune disease, um, a predisposition. Then you need a leaky gut and then you need something to trigger it. And that trigger could be um, a food sensitivity or a virus or bacteria. Um, something that your immune system is going to be overactivated towards, and then that leads to this cross reactivity with whatever it's being reacted to, with then the um, your own body tissue. And so, I want to talk about why concussions or traumatic brain injury can lead to autoimmunity or increase one's risk. And so, we're going to go right into a paper and talk about how the gut. Um, and the gut's reaction to traumatic brain injury. And so this paper is from 2015. It is um, from Taylor Francis Group. And so uh, it's in the laboratory of genetics at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Um, the, it's called the gut reaction to traumatic brain injury. And basically these, uh, these people were looking at how the gut reaction to traumatic brain injury is affected in, in flies. And they're looking at specific genetics based on that. Um, but they just have a really good picture here that I wanna show based on, based on human studies. So just in the abstract, traumatic brain injury is complex, right? Uh, there's genetic variation in it. Um, and they showed that the TBI in flies, as in humans, similar to humans, increases permeability of the intestinal epithelial veil. Basically, it causes leaky gut. This can result in um, hyperglycemia or increased glucose load and a higher risk of death in, in specifically flies. Okay. Um, and so they wanted to look at, they're, they're really, they're reviewing so they can look at a specific uh, fly model for TBI. Okay. But I want to show this picture here. So basically, what happens with a TBI? We get um, this this rotational access over the brain stem, and we get this movement of the brain inside, its, inside the fluid. This causes damage to axons, damage to the white matter or the basically connections between different brain cells in the brain and also down into the spinal cord. And it also causes inflammation, it causes disruption of the blood brain barrier that surrounds it, okay? And then you have problems with couple axes going down. So basically the brain gut axis that includes the efferent vagus nerve and the afferent. So basically what the vagus nerve brings into the brain, which is different information coming from the gut. And then the efferent is going out and that's the vagus nerve going to activate the gut, um, activate motility, decrease inflammation. And you also have this enteric nervous system and neuroendocrine signal. So these are basically signals that are going directly to the gut um, or in the enteric nervous system itself. Um, so basically within the gut or neuroendocrine signals, basically how the nervous system affects our hormones. And those hormones travel through the blood to activate or to change the gut barrier, okay? So a normal gut barrier looks like this. You have tight junctions that are um, held together by these occludins and zonulin proteins. This prevents basically things from, so this, let's go back here real quick. 
So this is the outside um, of the, this is the inside of the intestine, basically outside your body. And then here a little villa, this is how we absorb food. And then inside, this is inside the, um, inside the body, inside the blood, uh, down here on the bottom. And so these tight junctions prevent bacteria, prevent um, these pathogen patterns, these it's, uh, pattern associated molecular, or sorry, pathogen associated molecular patterns. Uh, we said bacteria, glucose, other like solutes from getting in. And so basically they have to be controlled to get in, and that's through channels. So this prevents that. Um, what happens is when we get a TBI, we have an impaired barrier. So it's basically the blood brain barrier um, gets disrupted, and that's because they also have zonulins and occludins holding those tight junctions together. And if that gets disrupted, also the, 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 uh, the gut barrier gets disrupted. These there that are clodins and occludins here, um, and then zonulins as well. And so they get disrupted. What happens is these bacteria or pathogen associated molecular patterns can come in, uh, maybe damage associated molecular patterns. Basically, if there's inflammation, damage to our own tissue, they activate a macrophage. They activate something in the immune system, immune system cell, which causes this reaction to increase inflammation. And that inflammation is this feedback to then basically cause more breakage of these clodins and occludins. So you have this inflammatory feedback loop that is constantly trying to increase more inflammation to kill, um, to kill anything that's coming in. The reason why we have this is to prevent bacteria, prevent these viruses from coming in and damaging our body. But when you have an overactive immune system like this with intestinal permeability, and now you're eating something that has a protein, like let's say uh, gluten or the smaller one, gliadin, or you're eating uh, dairy protein like casein or whey, um, you're eating lectins uh, from wheat and legumes, um, and beans that can a lot of times cause this this uh, overreaction to that food and now all of a sudden you have an immune system reaction to that food and that immune system reaction can then cross react with other parts of our body so this is how uh, traumatic brain injury can then cause intestinal permeability and at the same time if this efferent vagus nerve is supposed to come down here and blocks it has a little it's blocking this NF kappa B. It's blocking this inflammatory signal. Well, if the vagus nerve is disrupted, which a lot of times it becomes, or areas up in the brain become disrupted that prevents this parasympathetic rest and digest vagus stimulation, we don't have this anti-inflammatory reaction. Therefore, this just feeds this positive feedback loop even more and more and more. And that is just not good for, for our gut, for our health, and for our possibility of of a risk of an autoimmune disease or, um, or bringing on a food sensitivity. So it's really important that, well, let's go back here. So, so I hope that picture kind of shows a little bit, um, a little bit based on how traumatic brain injury can kind of show or cause intestinal permeability and should give us kind of a risk or increase our risk for autoimmunity. So that's why it's important after getting the concussion in order to, to do things like maybe fast for 24 hours, um, eat high fat foods and stay away from the starchy carbs, the gluten, um, lectins, maybe even dairy and whey because that could be then a food sensitivity reaction as well or cause a food sensitivity reaction uh, to stay away from those and to uh, obviously just eat healthy, um, get in a, the lowest inflammatory state as possible take proper fish oil, uh, make sure we have vitamin D, make sure we're outside exercising, low aerobic, in order to, to decrease inflammation as much as possible. And so until that gut heals, once that gut heals, then everything should kind of start getting back to normal, um, along with maybe possibly rehab for the concussion itself. So uh, I hope this was a good one. I hope everyone kind of enjoyed or, or got a little bit of insight in how the brain and the gut are connected in this way for autoimmunity. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Uh, I'd love to hear them. If you have any suggestions for future topics, I would love to hear those as well. So thank you and have a great day. Stay healthy.